Fed is caught in a trap. Well, there's a lot of talk that the people on the Fed, the governors and the presidents are independent, which is a true statement. The Fed is not. The Fed is an institution, was uh, founded by the uh, Federal Reserve Act in 1913, and it represents the government of the United States. It's part of the government. And the other, so consequently, it wants to keep interest rates low so that America's debt isn't high, meaning the interest rates don't go higher. The other part of the trap is the inflation rate we're in right now. Um, the uh, Look at my notes here. The uh, PPI was up a record 9.6% uh, in the last go round. CPI was up 6.8%. It's the highest since 1982. I look at the average of the two, which is 8.2%, which means that unless you can make more than 8.2% through appreciation, in other words, the stock going up, or through income, which is virtually impossible in bonds right now, you're uh, negative to uh, real rates, and that's a huge problem. I think today's uh, meeting, Fed meeting, is one of the most significant we've had in years. What, what, what are they going to tell us? I mean, we, we know kind of what we expect to hear signaled. Is there any potential surprise out there or anything they, they could say that would rattle the markets even more? I feel like the market's kind of priced in what they're anticipating hearing today, that they're going to be tapering much sooner and that they'll raise interest rates sooner next year, too. Yeah, the Fed could come in with something that was either higher or lower, and we very well could get a surprise. There are lot, there's lots of people on the Fed with uh, different opinions right now. So it's, it's certainly not a unanimous uh, position uh, that the Fed is taking. So it's going to be interesting to say who wins. But if the Fed tapers more than the market is anticipating, you could see a hit to the equity markets and a rise in yields. Though yields are so low with the 10-year Treasury around 143, even a rise of 25 or 30 basis points isn't going to make much difference in terms of the economy. I think uh, there's a potential here for a real surprise. The Fed has also made it clear they're not going to be raising interest rates uh, during this time period. They may be tapering but not raising rates. So I would be shocked if they... Uh, uh, made some announcement about raising right, rates today. And also, I think that uh, Chairman Powell's commentary after the FOMC minutes are released are going to be very uh, telling in terms of not only what he says, but how he says it. It's clear that his notion that yields, uh, that uh, uh, inflation was transitory, was uh, a miss. I mean, a clear miss. Right. It's in transit, all right. I agree. It's in transit. It's in Hi. transit across the entire landscape. And uh, we've had this huge amount of inflation, and I don't see it ending anytime soon. And by the way, with the producer price index report, that flows into the CPI, which means that right. the consumer price index is likely to be higher uh, next time they announce it. Mark, let's get back to that trap that investors are in, because if, if yields aren't paying you anywhere near, uh, yields from treasuries or any of the bonds aren't paying you anywhere near inflation, this 8 percent plus, if, you know, you're not going to see returns on that in the stock market, those are two factors to consider, but you can't keep it in cash because that's the worst place to be in a situation like this. Here's my suggestion, and it varies, the percentage varies with somebody's age and their income level and their lifestyle. But my suggestion is to do two things at this point. One, still have plays for appreciation. There's certainly a lot of good analysts at my firm and other firms that have good ideas. And two, I've transitioned or pivoted, if you will, out of bonds. And I'm using uh, closed-end funds and exchange-traded funds that are yielding considerably more than the average uh, inflation rate that I just gave you of 8.2%. Uh, There's double-digit yields there that you can get. And by the way, these things pay monthly. A lot of them pay monthly, not all of them. So you're getting a steady stream of income. So that's what I've been using with uh, a lot of my clients is a replacement for bonds, if you will.